Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License. Today, we're playing Dream Daddies. We're doing, we're doing a dating sim. As y'all know, we like to play dating sims for Valentine's Day and for Halloween. So this is our Valentine's Day stream. Last week, I was um, doing Super Bowl stuff. So um, I apologize. I did not get to hang out with you guys. That was my choice, though. I said get to, but it was my choice. Um, but we're going we're gonna to play Dream Daddies together. We're going to play Dream Daddies together. Okay. I got to get the game going. I've never, I've never played this before. So this is, a, this is a first playthrough. I did go and locate a guide in case we need it. Because um, I want to get good endings and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But... I don't know anything about this game other than you date dads and it's a Game Grumps game. <laughs> that That's everything that I know, okay? So we're going to play some Dream Daddies. Go Taylor, play Taylor's boyfriend's team. <laughs> oh, Lunar. Yeah, it was a good Taylor Bowl. It was a good Taylor Bowl. So, um, so yeah, we're going to play this. I do have my guide. I'm happy for you guys to give me tips. If you know how this game works, like tell me what to do. That's fine with me. Um, cause I don't really know much about this. Okay. I got the game going. I think let's see. You can hear it. I think you can hear it. Okay. Let me, ah, oh, green daddies. There we go. I didn't actually get to watch the overtime. I feel like it's still loud. I turn it down more. Okay. Um, okay, what wait, what options do we have? Streamer safe mode. Yes. Thank you. I want that. Oh, the in-game audio is really loud. Okay, let's do this. Okay. I, mean, I might have to do just some volume adjustments. Okay. Um, let's new game. It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Thanks, Dad. I'm glad I know that now. Okay. That's what snoring sounds like. Dad? Oh, the dad's the one that's sleeping. Dad, wake up! Okay. Wake up, pretend to be dead. Five more minutes. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna... I just... Okay. I assume these choices don't really matter. We're just going to wake up. Mm. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Okay, so I'm a dad too. Okay. I guess this is my daughter. Morning, Manda Panda. <gasps> Yikes. Dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Be generous and kind to everyone. Okay, we can Build do that. that dad. Oh, Okay, we get a character creator. Wait. Okay. So I can be... Bit... Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. I can be all kinds of dads. Wait. Okay. Wait, what kind of dad should I make? Am I ever going to see myself? Like, in a lot of these games, you don't ever see your own character, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, shadow means, okay. Shadow means facial hair. Okay. 
Wait. Can I make him look girly? I guess that doesn't... None of these look girly. I guess we'll be this one. Okay, here. Oh my god. I did not know there was a character creator in this game. Wait. <gasps> you can be Goku! Oh wait, that's all the hairs. Okay. Which one's the girliest? I guess that one's pretty girly. Oh, I can Oh, I can have pink hair. Yay! Okay. That's very important. <gasps> we can have hard eyes or oh, anime eyes. Oh my god. Wait. I guess these are eyebrow colors. Oh no, these are eye colors. Okay, we'll have to have these blue eyes. What the heck? Oh my god. Okay, we're just going to have heart eyes. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have hard eyes. Oh wait, <gasps> but you can have... Okay, Karen, stop getting distracted. We have dads to date. Wait, how do I change my um eyebrow color? Oh, brows, here we go. <laughs> okay, the um... The heart eyes don't look that good with any of the brows. We'll do those, okay. Go back to noses. Oh, that's a cute nose. Okay. Okay, we can definitely Okay, even though we're dad, we can still make a girl. That's good to know. Oh my gosh, all these lip colors. We'll just go with that one. Okay, this one. <laughs> we can just have a random mustache. Oh, glasses. We don't need any glasses. Piercings. Okay, clothing. I think I just want to, I want to give our dad a suit, okay? So we're going to have, we're going to have a girly face and then a suit. I think this looks good. Oh, but I like the egg boobs. Those are pretty nice. But no, we're going with the suit. Okay. Yeah, it looks good, right? Like, I look good. I'm going to attract all the dads like this. Okay, looking good, daddy. Name that dad. Oh, okay. Karen. Terry. Okay. Be that, Be that dad. Start building credit as early as possible. Smile is a oh. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Oh, you do see yourself. Okay, I was not expecting that. <laughs> Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos in little photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Okay, the only way your father and I, the only way your mother and I, oh, so I get to decide. I get to decide if like I, I had her with a woman or if we had, like adopted her, I guess. Okay, we're gonna choose this one. Maybe we'll choose different the next time. So we're gonna say that she had a, we, had, we were with her mother. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. <laughs> Halloween when you were maybe four? Oh my god, the dragon costume. Oh my god, it is a dragon. It's like a dragon with a tutu. That's so cute. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Hmm. Iconic. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? 
You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Mm. Right, yep, definitely repress that memory. <laughs> and this was you in your horse face. Mm. Oh my god, she was a horse girl. Dad, I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Mm. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is an important blackmail for later on down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. She hating on my ska band? She hating on my ska band. Ouch, kid. Ah. The communist manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that will never stop. I will never stop mixing those two Ugh. up. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since we were seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who... Oh, tried to steal people's pets. Fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station. Pooped her pants during a sleepover. Oh my gosh. What should we choose? Okay, wait. I, I realized I need to do something. I forgot to open up my own stream. So I wasn't watching to make sure things were doing right. Okay, there we go. It's open now. Um... I think she fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station. Um, yeah, this girl was a troublemaker. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. Oh, right. I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station. It just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Aww. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Huh. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFridays. <laughs> and then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. I think you meant food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Oh man, Aww. I want some cheesy tostada blast. Dad, still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. I finally decided to break the silence. That was the day you were born. That was the day we adopted you. Oh, so you get to, oh, you get to choose either way. Okay, that was the day you were born. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there at the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender, but of course I was freaking out. And the old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds up my hand and looks me directly in the eye, the calmest I've ever seen her. She says, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Uh. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it be must be like for Amanda. Huh. She pats me on the back. Huh. Come on, Pops, we gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Huh. Okay, so we're okay, so we're at the old place and we're going to our new place. Okay. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 hmm. years ago. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had a very strong arm. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. All right. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? Pl we get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Huh. And that'll be plenty more stuff to me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get in the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So, so what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and I do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features, oh, washer and dryer hookups, two car garage, multiple places to sleep. 
this is not a feature. This should just have this. Anyway, it features washer and dry hookups. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. Well, worry about that no longer, as our new place features machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly thereafter. An upper-class luxury, I fear. The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats upstairs, sweetie. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. All right. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know, Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn to parallel park at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Not going to happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. So you won't have to chase away any rowdy teens off your lawn. You're the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're real... Don't you dare. Senior. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. I'm just going to ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on our new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery mm. shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then checked, and then check the area out. We'll pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mowed and a for sale sign is still in the yard. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. This child is insane. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. Um, we need to unpack first. I need some coffee. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? Man, if it's 10 a.m. and I haven't had coffee, something went really wrong. I think we're gonna say we need to unpack. As much as I would like to enjoy a delicious and healthy ice cream sando right now, we've got work to do, kiddo. And we need to make it snappy because there are five sealed crates of DVD box sets blocking the bathroom and I gotta pee real bad. Well, don't let the entire cast of all 13 seasons of Shark Tank with actual sharks stand in your way. Let's get to it. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door brandishing a plate of cookies. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh yes, hi, I'm Karen. That's what my name is. Oh. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know. She baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, <laughs> but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? All right. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Ooh, cracker bells. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh. Amanda, come back. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a oh. charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant... <laughs> Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. <sighs> oh. Oh. Uh, Ooh, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both oh. made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge oh. smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk around your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. 
Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> this is so, okay, this is so cute. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking by, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about it, st st stuff. I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Yeah. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. <laughs> See, you're already flirting. It's great. Where'd those cookies go? <sighs> They're gone. I'm sorry. Hey! If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway. Huh. I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Okay, um, let's get some fresh air. I could use coffee. Joseph probably wants his plate back. I, I mean, I, I think I think Church Youth Minister wants his plate back, right? Like, this is clearly one of the dads, you know? Um, let's take him his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're going to be the best neighbor in the whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all the other neighbors' butts with kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Huh. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. Huh? I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with the well-groomed blonde children standing in the yard. <laughs> uh, good eye, kid. Huh? I guess they, they look like him, huh? And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. Why do their eyes look like that? Okay, I, I'm, I'm regretting my choices. Why, why, I don't think, maybe Joseph didn't need his plate back. We just wanted to uh, return this nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Geez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They look exactly like him. Ah, they were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get it to eat any. Oh my gosh, their names are Christine, Christopher, and Chris. What the heck? I chuckle nervously. Hmm. Well, okay, we're just gonna set the plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly, right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. The kids' eyes bore into us and we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. Eh? I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. Um, okay, so I feel like, okay. We're clearly doing the Joseph route. I'm going to open my guide. We're going to do... We're going to do Joseph. Okay. <laughs> okay, it says, After you return his plate, your choices don't matter. Though we recommend not going out to watch the game. And not meeting Craig at the gym. Okay. Um... Okay, let's get some coffee. I'm feeling a little bit sluggish, and coffee seems like a more responsible option than just taking a nap. I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely more responsible to just go huh. get coffee. Just fix it with coffee. Although that's what I do. I love naps too, though, but a lot of times I just go get some coffee or tea. We walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little, excuse me, place on the corner. All right. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. Mm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me, and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal mm. zone. Dad! And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go up to the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame and you Consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug. Oh my god, my dad is like an overthinker like crazy. Dad. dad! You're just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! We walk inside. Oh, that's so sad because of his wife. Okay. Huh. Oh. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? Oh, wait. I guess Matt should have a voice. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh, oh it's, uh, 
It's kind of dumb. Okay. I think it's mentioned in a poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea, but like, the business is still running. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time now, and I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure <laughs> we're all getting more and more uncomfortable, and the more I keep talking, and but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Matt, take a breath. <laughs> so, what will it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... Um, Godspeed you black coffee. Ice Tegan and Sarah. Chai Antwoord. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, let's do... Ice Tegan and Sarah. Good choice. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Tegan and Sarah are a really awesome Canadian indie band formed in 1995, and they were nominated for a Grammy in 2013, and are known for being masters of not only pop hits, but meaningful lyricism. Hey. Okay, so this guy is a super music nerd. I'm doing this thing again. Hey. But coming right up. Hey. And for you? I have a macchiato de Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. And do you want that small, medium, or biggie smalls? <laughs> okay. Okay. That was a good pun. I want I want a Biggie Smalls size. Uh, medium. Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks in Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyway. Hey, hey, Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's all right. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk yeah. to people. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drink down on the table and I have a sip. The ice Teagle and Vera is delicious. Hi, we're new to the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Karen. Oh, right on, pleased to meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Hey. You know what? Let me get you guys' opinion on something. Matt goes to the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give a banana bread a taste. We want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commiserate with, uh, I've taught her well. We've trained for this day. <laughs> I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Um, that serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Hey. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Mm. So any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you a dad band pun, but I'll give it a shot. Okay. Banana bread Kennedys. Grateful banana bread. Right said banana bread. We're obviously going with banana bread Kennedys. Like what? You know, like the punk band. Uh -huh. I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. <laughs> That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Oh. Yeah, Banana Bread Kennedy's Strong Decisions. That's art, baby. Hey. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. Hey. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Oh. See, it sounds good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Okay, um, fresh air or nap. Okay. Time to soak up all the vitamin D, make our bones nice and strong. Yeah, our skeletons are gonna get so strong. They're gonna hop right out of our bodies and crush cars with their bony fingers. 
Amanda, I already have an irrational fear that my skeleton will one day escape this flesh sack and run amok. Please don't encourage it. Right, sorry. Uh, to the park. Try not to make assumptions about people. Okay, thanks, Dad Tip. Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street. The flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of nearby barbecues drifts through the air. This place is huh? nice. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Mm. We're on to you, baby. <laughs> we walk for a while, and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when, heads up, oh. ow, oh no, what just hit me? Oh, Frisbee, oh, a Frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Oof. <laughs> a Corgi with a neat plaid <gasps> handkerchief tied around his neck bounds up to me wagging its tail. Hello. Ar -ar. He runs around in a circle, nudges my leg with his nose. Oh God, this is the cutest dog. Oh my gosh. I want to pet the dog. I'm a pet, I'm pet, I'm pet, the, I'm pet the dog. Okay, but where do I pet the dog? Um, uh, head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. All smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Oh my god. Okay, so this is another dad. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim at people's heads. It's a new technique. I catch it with my teeth next time. I'll catch it with my teeth next time. He caught me off guard with this round. Not again, not ever again. Oh, he, oh God. He just, he eggplanted at me. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Ha, I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. That's a pretty good voice for him, I think. I'm Karen. This is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi, your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to the grassy knoll where his young, where a young girl sits on the checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to Whoa. us. This is Daisy. She's reading the brothers something, Ka Karam Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Uh. Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. What? Whoa. Uh. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no, it's happening. <gasps> Go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Amanda, okay, okay. What is happening right now? Okay. Um. Okay. Brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Oh no. Oh no. Wait, what's this do? Can't switch daughters. Amanda's your only daughter? I wasn't trying to switch, I just wanted to know what the option did. Okay, wait, item? Uh, child art. You unfurl your, your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute. It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 10 HP, you regain 20 HP, yes! Daisy just started a weekly Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Amanda, dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. Oh no. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Okay, let's do spelling. Fumbling through your phone browsing, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda's winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be your third win in a row. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get a top prize. 
We're taking it out next weekend. How's that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Oh no, I'm losing. Wait, let's go back to bragging. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her friends? First word at 10 months? Daddy. Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. Oh, God. Okay, we're evenly matched. Um, let's brag again. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about having her skip a grade. Oh, even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. Oh, my God. I'm losing. Okay, wait. What a... <sighs> Let's pull out a band-aid. With a flourish, you produce a band-aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. What are you doing? Dad! Being a protective parent. Anyone would agree it's an unusual gesture. You loot What? Daisy here has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. Oh my god, I'm losing! Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Oh, did he have to add that insult to injury being such a gracious winner? I lost the dad battle. I lost the dad battle. So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around uh -oh. here? Yeah, we live in the cul-de-sac down to the coffee shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any of your more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up hmm. us? Trying and succeeding? I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. <laughs> too close to the truth, Dad. Aww. Let us never again speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Terry. <laughs> we laughed off the horse epic and walked around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Okay, so now we go take a nap. All this sunlight is making me really tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. That's definitely not enough sleep. Need at least 16. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps coming up behind us. Karen, bro. Nice. I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy. Wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. Mm -hmm. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act. Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Nice. Aw, thank you. Last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in California. Just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How is Smashley doing? I don't know. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is, is her name. Wow. That's such a college nickname. That's know. crazy. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Hmm. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Ain't life, bleh, ain't life something, bro, right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Hmm. Keg Stan Craig? Oh, yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Oh. <laughs> That's a thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Hmm. Right. He was very good at it. Ah, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of a daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just oh. walk home. <laughs> well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Haha, <laughs> I don't know. Bro! Come on, it'd be fun. 
We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up, and do a bro brunch like in the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds oh. great. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped in as kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. Why's that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then just drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. Please never. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. Hmm. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Okay, so we've, we've met a lot of dads. We've met a lot of dads. Amanda and I flop down into the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before yeah. she can sit. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say mm. that. Oh, dad, it's going to be okay. It'll be fine. I know, I know. I just... You're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit. I'll, and I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Mm -hmm. Of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Hey. A dog? Yeah. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what's going gonna, gonna to take? Medium-sized dog. Handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. <laughs> well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda yeah. laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... <laughs> Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Hey. This is from McGowan College of Arts and Design. Open it. Huh? But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Huh. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big yeah. deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, 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 uh -huh. um, we, her face drops. Regret to inform you that we're unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Arts and Design. Uh -huh. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Uh -huh. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me I just want to see my portraits or whatever. I put Amanda in for a big hug. Oh my gosh, this is so sad. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch mm. you up for sure. Yeah, I know, it's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying mm. that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I get forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight. So you'll have a new, huh. the new place all to yourself. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Um, I'm secretly the mayor of this town. Oh my God, it's Animal Crossing. We're going to go attend the union meeting. Boss man's been riding us proles too hard. It's time to rise up for our rights. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're not even going to invite me to the riot? I'm sorry, sweetie. It's an honest day's work for an honest day's riot. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Oh. Uh... Go to bed? It said, it said don't watch the game. I'm wiped. Have fun with the, with the Emmas. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Miss Ve Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome. Night, Pops. I guess Vega's another dad. Wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early birds. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Okay. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out, but it's Craig. I do want to catch up. Um, we're not going to go to the gym. The thing for, uh, for Joseph recommends we don't do that, so we're going to go back to sleep. I shoot a quick text to Greg and apologize for failing and immediately fall back asleep. 
Oh man, how long was I out? What time is it? I look over at the clock. It's 3.55 p.m. I have to be at the parent-teacher conference in five minutes. I jump out of bed, throw on the nearest clothes, and run out the door. How the heck did he go to bed early and still sleep until 4 p.m.? I don't understand. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, is it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help, youth capitalized. <laughs> Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavy, lidded eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left, can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. The punk youth set me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where the low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Of course we were in the right hmm. spot all along. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Karen. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Right, Lunar? That's crazy. What a shit little kid. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck ah. in this. Alright, where are we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to hmm? make a fart noise. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and break for the door. Is he really? I don't feel like he's that unreliable. I mean, he doesn't talk explicitly about certain things that are happening to them, but it's still very obvious what's happening to him. So I don't know. Maybe he is. I get, it's been a long time since I read Catcher in the Rye, but he's not, he's not an example of what I would use as an unreliable narrator. Uh, the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for what? the door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Ah. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Um, Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Hmm. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please, call me Hugo. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going <sighs> on? Amanda's never been the most engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. I hadn't even crossed my mind that something uh... might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Oh. We just moved. We just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it mm -hmm. than I was. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her. I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, hey. Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes? They ever catch that ride? Hmm. Yes. What? I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Huh. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. Yeah, this is insane. This is, this is ridiculous. Okay, it's not the most ridiculous dating sim we played. I mean, we played Hat to a Full Boyfriend, but like, this is pretty crazy. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Okay, um, let's make something at home or let's go to the mall food court. Okay. 
Um, let's make something at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it will at least be edi edible. That's the spirit. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents, and that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents also have dealt with similar hmm. situations, and maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? <laughs> you have a Twitter? Uh -huh. What? Never mind. <laughs> Nobody has a Twitter anymore. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning huh? things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's yeah. class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I, I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. You're bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school. Yep. Mm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Hi. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Mm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Whoa. What? No. Dad? Ugh. I can't believe you would, ugh, dad. I mean, geez, why would you, ugh, gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends, he's my friend. Okay, okay, geez, this is going well. Well, good talk, love you kiddo. I guess Noah's why she's not turning in assignments or whatever in class. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation's over. Amanda gets back home and starts ah. cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Arti artisanal? There's two ingredients to mac and cheese, mac uh. and then cheese. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus, it has bacon on it. Aren't we a society collectively over bacon? Aww. Bacon never stopped being good. It just has a PR problem. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Y'all remember when like bacon was like the whole thing? Oh. We get to work on the recipe, Amanda measuring things out and handing them to me at, to dump in a bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on bacon duty, so I chop a bunch and toss it in a pan to get it sizzling. The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of the cheese and bacon, but we also need to counterbalance it with a crunchy mouthfeel of breadcrumbs. Uh, I'm going to check on the bacon. It's still pink and rubbery. I give pieces... Oh, I clicked it too fast. Wait, what's mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff and it... Texture, uh... Yeah. Listen, I've been watching a lot of the Food Channel and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, no, I get that. Every time I watch that channel, I just feel, in order, hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. Ah. Mood. <laughs> I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. <laughs> Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about the food, it's also about the words that are fun to say. <laughs> Gregarious. Oh my god. Um Boisterous. Yeah. Caddy Wampus. Tabernacle. <laughs> All of a sudden the bacon bursts into flames. I must not have been paying attention to how hot the pan was. I was too distracted saying words. Fire, fire, oh god, fire. I run around the kitchen looking for anything to put on the fire. I grab a cup of water and Amanda snatches mm -hmm. it out of my hands. Nope. She puts it down and calmly grabs a lid from the pantry and places it on top of the flames and turns down the heat. I finally calm down. Did I almost burn down our brand new house because I was too busy saying silly words? Indubitably. Cool. Who wants takeout? We tried. Amanda and I order some Chinese food and eat it on the couch of our new living room. She flips huh. on the TV. Oh, cool. Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yeah. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driver the, and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done gone done got control of the truck. I can't steer on them 
their damn ice roads. What the heck? Let me use this EVP meter. Try and communicate with the spirits. That's clearly how they're talking. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're going to die. Hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. This is art. <laughs> this episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. As one does. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint, Dogbone, after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Okay, stand up for yourself. Don't let anyone disrespect you. I got it. Okay, we're snoring again. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda's much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So you excited for the cookout today? Um, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. <laughs> yeah, those are bad. Which means there will be more for me. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? Okay, but why are grocery store, like, sugar cookies with the frosting on top, why do those suck so much? Because if you make cookies at home and you put frosting on them, they are delicious. But those store-bought ones, they're so weird. Why? Anyways. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The societal butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with our store-bought veggie plate. We didn't want to risk burning down the house again. Mm. Well, at least they brought a veggie plate instead of those crappy cookies. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run around the sprinkler and adults chat in small circles. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Oh. Oops. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Oh. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And he brought veggies. Mm. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Yeah. Hi. Mm. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Huh? They stare creepily and say nothing. Yeah. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Why are they all... The, they somehow got four Chrises. They somehow got four different Chrises. Oh, oh how could I forget my lovely wife, mm. Mary? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Ah. I'll have to go look for him. Mm. What? You'll have to... Yeah. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor. Karen and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mary. Charmed. Well, I have to get over there now. <laughs> My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons a tall man in gothic attire over to the conversation. Okay, so Joseph is a married man. But we're doing Joseph's route. We're gonna be a homewrecker. Good eve, friends. <laughs> Damien, this is our new neighbor, Karen. Ah, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. If ever you're interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds uh. rad. Splendid, well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Damn, what a classy dude, okay. If we do a second route, if, if I don't know how long this game takes, but if we do a second route, Damien. Damn, what a classy dude. This is Robert. He lives just across the way. A haggard man nur nursing a glass of whiskey eyes me up and down. It's the guy. Oh my God, it's the guy from the coffee place. Hey. Hey, I'm Karen. Nice to meet you. He takes a long swig of his drink. Charmed. Hey. Karen and his daughter just moved next door. Cool. If you ever need recommendations on where to get a drink in this town, Rob's your man. Oh. 
I told you not to call me Rob. Booker Douglas! Right, got it. Robert ambles away without hey. saying goodbye. He's not really a people person. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everybody better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh. Come on, Dad, who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Ugh. Dad? Ugh, they're going to talk about the weather. Aww. Go do it, make a friend. What's wrong with talking about the weather? Okay, the weather's wacky. The weather is always a good topic of conversation. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye! Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? What a cool guy and mysterious. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? That mysterious goth guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right, I better investigate. Okay, so we're supposed to talk to Joseph and Damien. Okay, I spot Joseph chatting with Damien by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. I'm so curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Uh. It's definitely an interesting oh. choice. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Karen, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design choices. Ah, uh, greetings once again, Karen. Oh. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes. My daughter and I just moved in the other day. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone's so friendly Hi. and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hi, it's Damien, right? My name's Amanda. Oh. At your service, what a pleasure it is to meet you. Damien finishes this sentence with a flourish and bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Oh my. He's a vampire, right? Like this is, this is like, like, you know, uh, the boyfriend dungeon. He's, he's the vampire, right? That I, I'm not I'm not wrong there, I think. Amanda blushes and returns the jet returns the gesture with a curtsy. Because there always there always is. All these ones where we date guys, one of them's a vampire every time. My do you know how you know do you know how to treat a lady? What? Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh are they speaking in huh? unison? Uh, hey. Won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh Come play with us forever. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Ah. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that hmm. from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in <sighs> hand. I uh, don't know. <laughs> right, Lunar? Bye. Okay, but we're, we're, we're going for this. Okay, I'm going to figure out what's up with those kids by dating their dad. Mary takes a long sip of wine. Oh, my God. I think I might have tapped over VeggieTales, uh, taped over VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her <laughs> wine. Where's Krish? Come on. Wasn't he with you? Oh. You had him a moment ago. Hmm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass uh. to me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Uh. I have squeezed poor little sweetheart would you do me a favor and please find krish that would be great i'm sure he's fine mary okay geez it's really weird that he's more concerned about their baby than she is mary finishes her wine and wanders off dad can we go can we go now oh my god the shit kid is lucian's son or it's sorry, who's that? Damien? Yeah, Lucian. His name is Lucian. He's Damien's son. Huh. My God. Ah, oh, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Karen yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen. May I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Hmm. 
Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian area were vegetarians? They described they described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad, oh. that's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns on to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? Oh my! What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, feeling a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Oh my god, why? Lucian! Oh no. We'll talk about this oh. later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked oh. sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man. Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors pop out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Okay, so... Okay. With that, okay, we can skip to burger time. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is the first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese into p patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Okay, we're going with the one that's a good cook. This is a good choice. This is a good choice. Oh. You probably don't know this, Karen, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Hey. He's ungrillable. I try to get on his level, but I just can't hey, catch up. Yeah. Oh my God. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Oh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate yeah. the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Mm. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too <sighs> cheesy. Please stop. <laughs> okay, that wasn't that bad. They were pretty good. Okay, those are pretty good. All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Eh. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here. Oh, this is Craig. Excuse me. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood mm -hmm. a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? <laughs> yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. So if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes way over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer and our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Okay. Ooh, it says I successfully completed chapter one in my Steam achievements. Okay. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Okay. Um... Okay, so until we get to the dad book park, it doesn't really matter what I choose, apparently. I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like it was I was at a networking event. I wish I could have been playing paranormal <laughs> ice road truckers. Um, I mean, I got a burger. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, it's not that this was a bad situation. But if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver linings get you through to the other side. We ate Rockenbergs today, and it was good. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on dad book. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. <laughs> I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. Okay. All right. So I guess that's like the intro section of this game. And from here, you, you go down whatever route. Amanda and I arrived home in the revenants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this <laughs> evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, hmm. is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted. 
and be home before midnight. Mm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Yeah. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that. And I will never do that. Mm. Okay. Do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Okay. Uh, see how long I work on some stuff, throw a party. Okay. Um, we're gonna do... Work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. It looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. <laughs> Anyone can make baked Alaska. I don't understand. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire and he meant to do it. What a professional. Zoo, hello. How's it going? Yeah, so we're we're doing... Um, I've never played this game before, so this is a first playthrough, and we're doing Joseph's Route. But we just finished the, the first little chapter, so you haven't missed much yet. Um, okay. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was on about. It was just a lot of yelling. Oh my gosh. In Florida for a family reunion. Oh my gosh. I hope it's a nice part of Florida. Florida's a little bit um yikes right now. But uh, but you know it's a good time of year to go to Florida because it's not so hot in February. Um, otherwise it's pretty hot there. I'm originally from lower Alabama, so so I know. I know what's up with, with the Florida. <laughs> I want that pink bird stuffy in the chair. Oh my gosh, their pink bird stuffy is really cute. It's still too hot for me, even in February. Can't relate. I'm a tropical creature. Um, when I was at I was at Disney a couple of years ago though for Christmas, and it was actually cold. It was the first time ever I've been to Florida that it was freaking cold. It was like literally over Christmas. I like the cold. No, what? I don't. Uh, uh no, I don't understand. I've lived in the South all my life, so I don't... Uh, yeah, I know. I live in the swamp now. I'd move to Alaska if I could. Have you ever been to Alaska? It's nice, but I wouldn't move there. I wouldn't move there personally. I did like it, though. I've been on um, two Alaska cruises. They were nice. Come have some of my snowstorm. Oh, that's right, Kitty. You've got snow right now, don't you? Um, I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should crack in with Amanda. I'll send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander to the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon. Because it definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again and then my phone. Nothing yet. Okay, I see. See, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. An episode of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell is not only assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Oh no. Um, let's, okay. I hope nothing really, like, I hope this is just a false alarm and nothing's happening to Amanda. Me, dad, mood, right? Like, what the heck? Okay. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup. Sweetie, thank God you're <sighs> safe. Uh, yep. But now that I know that she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Bro, why were you texting her while she was out? Okay. Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of my text. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. 
dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go to school, are you? Okay. Um, I don't like your attitude. I have a right to be concerned. I was scared. All of these are crap. I don't like any of these answers. Um, we're just going to do the excuse one. He doesn't have a, like, I'm sorry. She's a teenager. This is normal. This is not a bit, not a big deal. Um, that she didn't answer her text messages. Okay. I was scared. Let's go with that one. You weren't responding. And it was just, it was just like when your mom, I have to stop myself from tearing up. Hey, you can't put that on her. Oh, dad, I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Uh, oh. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Yeah, are you? I mean, this is not fair. This is not fair what he's putting on her. That's not right. I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace uh -huh. offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Did they let you customize the dad in this? Yes. You will see You will see my girliest girly dad um, momentarily, I think. Uh -huh. Hey, I thought about what you said mm. last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just uh -huh. didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. See? Like, look at this. Look at this. Look what they let me do to this poor man. <laughs> I feel like every other playthrough I saw that saw the dad was just a goofy dude with glasses. No, they let me customize it. I got this one off Steam. Yeah, they let you do all kinds of things. Your version of dad is every hot boy in the animes I used to watch. That's exactly what I was going for, Kitty. Thank you for recognizing. I mean, like, look at those lips, those eyes, that hair. I almost gave him hard eyes, but they looked really stupid with all the eyebrows, so we gave him anime girl eyes instead. Shoujo eyes. Well, um, I'm sorry for freaking out on you. I trust you to make good choices. Good. Yeah, I'm sorry for freaking out on you. I should have just like calmly asked you why you didn't text back instead of freaking out. You're an adult now. I should have shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Team Terry? Team Terry. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on him? Already did. Yeah. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in time to in time it takes for me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Mm. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Mm -hmm. What? It, what's a social media platform? <laughs> oh my god. Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile mm. on my own. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on Dadbook, which as it turns out is a place where dads can get together and talk about Ugh. fatherhood. All right, Pops, we got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Shoujo eyes. Yes, exactly. Very important for attracting dads. Um, dads love the shoujo eyes. Okay, so there are supposedly answers that I'm supposed to put for Joseph's root. So, um, so we're going to go with those. So on Friday night, I'm most likely to, so polish my coin collection is what I'm supposed to say. Netflix and girl baby fall asleep while watching history channel, torment my children with dad puns, singing the blissful oblivion. Okay. We're going to polish our coin collection. If you had one thing to take with you into a desert Island, what would it be? Um, my trusty krill, the law shaker of salt, uh, cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. <laughs> uh, a boat obviously is what we're supposed to answer. One of these prompts is secretly Snorlax. True. What are your turn-ons? Um, okay, strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks, well-manicured lawn. Okay, so we're going to answer well-manicured lawn for, for our Joseph dad. We're, we're trying to break up his family. Like, his, his wife is so checked out and his kids are creepy. We're going to save him from that. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um technical writer salty boat captain pro skater who is also an astronaut mood um a good father oh the president of space we're gonna be a salty boat captain what's your favorite movie genre um war documentary sean connery's entire filmography anything on laserdisc <laughs> what a dad answer um romantic comedies wherever we may cry old comedies that have an age well and romantic comedies is our joseph answer what's your ideal date Napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle together, eating healthy dinner at 4 p.m., trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost, arson, um, being emotionally vulnerable. We're going to do a puzzle together. 
Um, what do you never leave home without? Um, my, a sensible cardigan, my sick vape, a book of word jumbles and a pen, a cool knife, my cripplingly low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home. Sometimes that's me after it takes me, it takes me a couple tries to get out the house. That's not unusual. Okay. Um, a sensible cardigan. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories, how proud I am of my child, potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill, when I can get, like when I can next get a cup of coffee, lawnmower modifications, potential ends of the world. Um, that's our Joseph answer, okay. Conspiracy theories is my husband. He loves conspiracy theories. What's his favorite conspiracy theory? Okay, profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad. Okay, I have Welcome. to make friends because I told you my daughter dads. I would. Oh. Hey, Karen, it's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. Dad Manda, I'm delighted to see you signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Thank you, Dad Manda, who's totally not my daughter. Okay, so obviously we're going to message Joseph. He And Colts, he likes to see what Flat Earthers are doing. He thinks it's entertaining. It is entertaining. Like, I, in some ways, I wish the world did work the way Flat Earthers think the world works. It's it's very good lore. It's really good lore. Um, you know? It would be really cool if it was true, but it's not true. Okay. Joseph Christensen. Voted Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids, I'm not in church. You can catch me out on the open water, setting sail on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. Um, on Friday nights, I'm most likely to lead the community in a fun mixer. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My six string. Oh, he has a six string. Okay. What are my turn ons? My loving wife. We're going to ruin that. What did you want to be when you grew up? A ship captain. Can't see the row named dad, but he looks steamy. He's very steamy. That's Robert. He's, um, he's the messed up alcoholic one. Like if we have time, like, I don't know. We'll see how into this game I am. We're doing Joseph's route because he was kind of the first one presented to us. So I figured that would be good intro to the game, but I'm super interested in Damien. Who's obviously the vampire since there's always a vampire in these games. And then Robert, who's the complete mess. Okay. So we want to message Joseph. Yeah. Okay, and here the dialogue options matter. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait, how do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A light smattering of Jesus. It's just just a, a thin a thin layer of Jesus on our toast, right? Will he want me to pray? Is he going to pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, are you doing okay, kiddo? I'm oh, fine. of course. I'm fine. Huh. I just started thinking about how there are a bunch of people who still don't think aliens exist and it's bumming me out. Like, space is so infinitely huge, just because you can't conceive it doesn't mean it can't exist. And I understand the Fermi paradox, but to completely write off aliens, there's so much stuff we just don't know. I'll be okay. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> but aliens are definitely out there, and I hope they'll one day be my friends. Yeah, me too, Amanda. I think that aliens are out there, Fermi paradox be damned. It just doesn't make any sense for them not to be. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? You have to tell me what's actually wrong. Remember how you used to be afraid of aliens? Um, I'm just going to ask her if she's sure. If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? Ice cream socials? Khakis? <laughs> Khakis, obviously. 
if it was a girl, you'd have to talk about the um the the denim colored leggings with the the rip in them. First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. There's a difference. Dad. You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put Aww. it like this. Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for inviting me to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not busy. Isn't that a little too business hmm. casual? I'm fine. Give me the uh. keyboard. I got this. Amanda focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great. Oh, she's just going to do it for me? I'm still new around here, so if you'd like, I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. <laughs> Oh my god, the smiley's a nice touch. Almost immediately I receive a response. What'd he say? Hey Karen, if you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today and we'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. Huh, that wasn't so bad. He uses a lot of exclamation hmm. points. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time. Huh. I respond back. Okay, sounds like fun. Wait, why are we signing? No, okay, no. Just because he signed his text, we don't need to sign our text. It's weird. Okay, don't do that. Well, I guess I'm doing this. Hmm. Okay, save a brownie for me. <laughs> hey, Lunar. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore. Amanda stares at me unblinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. <sighs> and Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never. Let's make, let's, I make a short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Karen. Yeah, don't be weird. He probably has a lot more to his personality than his religion. But what if they hang up a bunch of crosses or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner, during dinner, over the porcelain babies? Oh my God. The door begins to creak open, a shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Uh, Karen? The door bursts open the rest of the way. It's Joseph's eldest. What's his name? Hey. Hey. Uh. Shit. I think the oldest is Chris. Hi again. It's... I'm Karen. I know what your name is. Oh yeah, we met at the barbecue. Okay, I was right. It's Chris. Yes. How's the, uh... Please don't say it. Jesus? Oh my god. The anchor over the door gives me bad vibes. No idea why. It gives me bad vibes too. Since he's like super religious and he's got the anchor tattoo and the anchor over the door, it's honestly making me think um, Scientology a little bit. Like that's my mind is my mind is going cult. Um, yeah. Chris blinks slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Is your dad? Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Huh? This was a great first impression. Yes, I was about to say cult. Yeah, it's like there's like there's like. Scientology vibes going on here, I feel like. You know, with the, the checked out wife and the creepy kids and the anchor stuff. This was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph, he peeks his head around the corner. Karen, you made it. Joseph approaches me with his arms wide. I'm so glad you could come by. Are you ready to bake? I am not. <laughs> I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in. Yeah. Joseph leads me into a bright, spacious home full of na nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Yeah. I believe you've met Chris. Who left you outside? Yeah. Oh. Chris? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's all right. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Really shy or really weird for real. He could easily be a werewolf on a full moon. Just look at the telltale burns on his flop sideburns on his floppy hair. Wow, kitty. I hope so. I hope so. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. We try to cut him a little slack where we can. Ah, and here are the twins, Christian and Christy. Say hello to Karen. Hello, father. Hello, Karen. Hmm. Kids, come on. Dial back on the creepy twin shtick. Creepy twin shtick? Uh, okay. So we're gonna, oh, this is, this is a dialogue option that matters. We're gonna egg them on. Can you two say, come play with us, Danny? Hmm. 
Oh no. <laughs> the twins stare up unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. <laughs> oh, but he likes it. Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. Please help us, Mothra. Yes. No, I can't take it. Joseph is trying his best not to break in front of the kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to burst their dad, but can we keep it up? Okay, um, okay. Go with something obscure. Now say, he who walks behind the rose. The twins tilt their head in confusion. Uh-oh. He who, he walks? He who oh. behind Ooh. some rose. <laughs> The room is silent besides Joseph absolutely losing his mind. The last flub really sealed it. Oh my God, he loves me. I'm gonna wreck this family. I'm gonna wreck it so good. Hmm. Children of the corn, really? Is it not main, is that not mainstream? Am I off my game something fierce today? Good job, guys. We're scary. I was very scared. Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hand and the kids giggle with him. The twins, obviously pleased with their new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. Yes. I'm going to be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll try to teach them some lines from the thing. Mm. All right. So it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can out-trouble a career pro? I don't know about... I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the mm. kitchen. What now? That doesn't sound good. Christy? No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves. And he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on his surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Okay, so we should... Uh, oh, it doesn't have an option for this. I guess we can just look at whatever. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. I guess we'll head into the kitchen. Let's just follow him. It's been a while. I guess I should go into the kitchen and see what's up. Mm. I walk into the kitchen and find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. <laughs> the twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Christian? Oh. He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brown brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. Mm. You're too sweet. No, I'm not. Mm. You're so sweet. We might have to water you down. But spiders. No, not spiders. Joseph begins ticking, tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughing and squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her. But that girl is locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Mm. Save me from the spiders. Okay, we're supposed to spoon duel the spider king. I grab a wooden spoon and point it in Joseph's direction. Unhand her, foul beast. Okay, Karen, the valiant, let's see what you've got. You may have defeated me at Tarantula Ridge, but now I have the upper hand. Joseph gently puts Christy down behind uh -huh. him. Have you come to squash me, knight, or have you merely fallen into my web? I'm no mere fly spider king. Now, on God! For a minute or so, Joseph and I mock duel with the two dumbest looking spoons in the room. Eventually, I strike a killing blow in the invisible heart between his arm and his body, and Joseph recoils in horror. Family's here now. Okay, thanks, Zook. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you later. And have fun at your family reunion. Blast, I'm defeated. You could never best me, Spider King, for I have the power of... I sneak a taste of the brownie batter. The magic. Oh, man, that's way too oh. sweet. <laughs> Christy begins jumping up and down excitedly. My hero. Christy hugs my legs before making a surprisingly oh. fast exit. Hey, wait, do you want to bake brownies with us? Christy hesitates, then shakes her head no again. Sparkle pony. Sparkle yeah. pony? Joseph looks confused. Mm. You don't want to bake with your dad now. You want to play with Sparkle Pony. Yes. <laughs> okay, go. Before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. <sighs> Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, <sighs> face twisting. And that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? Egg beaters on the linoleum floor. Oh. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout, and I have a feeling Christy has something to do oh. with it. 
We need a fresh start. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really hey. a baker, but don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter, so we'll probably be fine. Probably. Hey. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Karen, you've baked a cake from a box before, once. How hard could this be? Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batali, save me. <laughs> Joseph and I set to work cracking the eggs and mixing the things and then pouring the things according to how we assume the back of the box would tell us to. Things go according to plan and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Uh. Phew. Wait, Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Wow, Karen, way to use those dad skills. I bet you baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose, Joseph. Oh. All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale and viola, duty done. <clears throat> now help me find Christy. Keep your eyes out for Pony that sparkles. Joseph, hold still. Mm. What? Thumb in position and got it. Hey? Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Ooh, is he... Uh... Oh, uh, thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I've linked the batter off my finger. It's really good yeah. batter. We, uh... We should find Christy. Mm. Yes, yes, we should do that, Karen. Joseph quickly composes himself. <laughs> All right, she can't be far. You take the Delta position, and I'll watch her six, y'all. I can't wait. I can't. We're gonna we're gonna break up this family so hard. Oh my God, I'm gonna be their new mom. Do you even know what that means? Wink. Alpha Tango Sparkle, Roger, Roger. <laughs> Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you out by the car. Yeah. Joseph, Christy, and I arrive in the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. Looks like this bake sale is already in full swing. Wow, this place is packed. Is this packed? There was a few people milling around. Must have been a value pack. You can count a city's population on your fingers and toes. This, count, this counts as packed. Point. Christy rocks, rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies. Oh. Okay, okay. Let's get set up. I want to see mom. Yes. She's down by the other row of tables helping out with another group. Want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seem, uh, seems unconcerned. So wait, mom came in a separate car? Wow. Does she always run yeah. that fast? Yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees weren't what they used to be. I remember when Amanda was her age, I couldn't get her to sit still for five seconds. Yep, great age to deal with. While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all of our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. <laughs> yes, does he actually? Joseph shrugs, eats a brownie. <laughs> it looks like some of the other stalls are setting, selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Whoa, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete mm. with that? Please, this is my first time to the rodeo. These bake, the bake sale rodeo. Mm. There's actually no rodeo here. Oh. It's just a bake sale. I think you and I put together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you think? Okay, so we're gonna say, oh yeah. Okay. He loves that. We high five. If you bake it, they will come. Um, it's not long before we have our first customers. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Oh, it's Matt. And um, Car Carmencita. Oh, we saw her name before, but we didn't see her. Hiya. Matt, Carmencita. Great to see you guys out hey. here. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Joseph mm. leans close to me. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. Mm. So what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say you used a box recipe. Don't say you used the box recipe. Um, we improvised. I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know? A little bit of flour here, a pinch of salt there. It's sort of like interpretive dance, but with cooking. <laughs> interpretive cooking, yes. I can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. There will never be another batch of brownies with the exact flavor sensation that these right here have. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, Matt. All right, all right, I'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high five Joseph as our happy customers uh -huh. walk away. See, not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feeling from that last sale. Who's next? We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually another family familiar face pops up. Karen, oh, it's the Frisbee guy. It's Brian, close enough. Uh -huh. Can we interest you too in any of our fine sweets and treats? 
You sure can. I bet I could eat 10 brownies. Must resist urge to be competitive. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, we don't have... Okay, it doesn't matter what we answer here, apparently. Let the man buy his brownies. So we'll put you down for 10. Ha! Better make it just two. One for me, one for Daisy. Coming right up. You excited for youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah. What's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. It's the Fast and the Furious. Really? If you think about it, there's some heavy religious undertones. I mean, there's family undertones. Joseph hands a baggie to Daisy. I made sure to give you guys the edges. I think he's making excuses. You know, make it. you can make any movie um, a Jesus movie if you try hard enough. I made sure to give you guys the edges. Clearly the superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk up with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what happened to the pews? Ernest spray painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. I would have gone for young man at the sea, but I respect that. <laughs> Speaking in ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it. Although, sometimes I wish... Never mind. What? It's kind of silly, but... Do you ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around on a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock, you know. Basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song. Joseph, I think about this every single day of my life, right? Because that sounds like an amazing life. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. One day, my friend, one day we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some more church patrons. Everyone seem, everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. Craig! He's going to be kind of a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself, to see if he has the resolve to refuse processed sugar. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Craig jogs up to our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies, too. Probably won't be able to sell the baby. She's impossible to read. It all comes down to Craig. Oh. Hey, bros. Hey, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. <laughs> Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Mm, I don't know. Okay. You can't spell diet without die. Okay, we're supposed to do remember that one time. Hey, Craig, when we were fifth freshmen, remember how our next door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap and how the washing machine exploded with suds? And then we decided to get back at them by baking brownies for them, but sprinkling high intensity hot sauce into the mix. And we watched them cry after <laughs> eating it. <laughs> I would feel bad, but we had to clean up the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one for old time's I sake. Craig thinks for a second, well, the girls just want a game. You know what? We'll take one for each of us. Oh. Even River? Oh. I'll eat hers. <laughs> You've got yourself. Oh my God. Okay. Whenever the eggplants happen, I just, I, I just, I can't, I'm so shocked. You've got yourself a deal. Uh, he really liked that. Like he liked that a lot. Um, the day winds down and pretty much out of items to sell. Everything one starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Boxed mix, huh? Come on. Mary saunters up to us. She looks like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. Yeah. Oh, hi, honey. Yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is actually they're just brownies. Cute yeah. and boring and safe. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes dart over to oh. me. What's the rookie doing here? Oh, yeah. I was just hoping to introduce Karen to the rest of the community. Mm. Uh huh. You got a load of this freak show? What? Mm. Weird folk is all. Holier than thou types. Hey. Don't you think, Karen? <coughs> Mary. Give it a rest, let buddy. the kid answer the question. Uh. What? She's so mean. Okay, so she's not just checked out. She's actually kind of a bitch. Um, they seem nice. They uh they all seem like they're really excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh. Mm. <sighs> Mary, can we talk about this later? Uh. Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest uh, to keep us cool. Can we please talk hmm. about this later? Sure thing, honey bear. Hey. Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Uh, hey. Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wad. 
if I may say so myself. Mm. Thanks. Uh? Now give me your wallet. What? Hey. Give me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix uh. itself? Mary. Mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers to me, mm. he's really good at it. Mary walks out without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Oh my God. If you're so unhappy, then leave. Um, I'm pretty sorry about that. Okay. Uh, we're going to say brownies fix everything. This brownie will alleviate the situation. Uh -huh. I take a brownie and split it in half, offering it to Joseph. He takes it. We eat. How's that uh -huh. feel? Better. Oh. Uh -huh. You ready to head out? I I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be these kids. Mom, we're gonna replace her. Like this, what? What's wrong with her? Why Why would you say that to someone you just met? I don't know their situation. Whatever. Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps her into the car seat. Hey. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out at mm. me. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. <laughs> huh, I won't keep you up then. Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also, happy to eat brownies. Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a bit less free labor in. I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. Oh, I have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, <sighs> okay. <sighs> sorry, I, I really I really can't stand Mary. Uh, it's fine, really. <sighs> I know, but first, hangout domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Exactly! Like, I don't know them well enough for you to be saying oh. that kind of stuff to me. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. Promise. I smile. I'd like that. I am. Oh, and one last thing. Joseph tosses a cling wrap brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch uh. it. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope, too late. I'm already walking away. <laughs> But, oh. bye. Joseph walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. Um, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat. Do I want to eat it? Wait. I'm gonna eat it. I force the Brownie down my gullet, knowing full well that this will be my undoing. I will feel this later. Huh. Good. I step inside to find Amanda doing homework uh. on the couch. Hey, Father Unit. Hi, child. I am required by law to care for. How's homework? It's really fun and educational. Really? How long have you known me for? Right. Hmm. How was the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. Glad to hear ah. it. So, so what? Mm -hmm. Were there any extra brownies or did you maybe sneak one or... Sorry, kiddo, no mm -hmm. dice. I feel the immediate shame for scarfing that last brownie. Actually, I don't know if it's shameful or just nausea from all the brownie, but mm -hmm. it could be both. Wow, I guess I could have given it to Amanda. Uh, that's okay, but she ate all the cookies earlier. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. I hope Zook isn't having to deal with any last hunters of Orange County since he's in Florida right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. Date complete. Okay, sweet. I should have gotten lots of dad points. S rank. Yeah, okay. I've had that much fun in my life. So there's that dad awesome. points and daddy points. So y'all, my camera's blocking it, but this total, so dad points, I got like 600,000 and daddy points, I got two hundred, basically like over 200,000. And I think it's like the dad points is probably the hearts and the daddy points is probably the eggplants, right? Yeah, S is the best. S is the best rank. So we did good. Okay, it says, I just got an achievement. It says one third of Margarita Zone. So I guess that's the achievement for um, his route. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. 
Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds hmm. it. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! Oh my god, good job, Amanda. Oh, I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Wait, dad. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA is one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we'll make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Right. Thanks, dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing out our foiled wrap burritos from the heavy nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. That does sound really good. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through yes. the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes. And there are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Then I mentioned that students get their own studio space when they're seniors, and we get all the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have to I didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. <laughs> Carl ruled. Hey. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit, though? Yeah, probably. Oh boy, I think I'll leave that all up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had a talk with Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put a damper on good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park in these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can ah. do it. Okay. I promise, I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross and don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with huh. tears. Oh dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now and you're such a good person and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop, you're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears on my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I put Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the yeah. forehead. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> Love you too, Pops. Aw, she got into the school. I'm so happy for Welcome. her. You've got dads. Okay. Oh. Hi, Karen. Oh. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on dad book? Oh, if I click, I can answer her back. Why, Karen, I never... We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though I am, of course, flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Oh my god. Okay, I should have clicked through that before. Okay. Hi, this is Steven from Dadmazon. I'm out front with your delivery. 
Oh, okay, yes, I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry, I need to put on pants first. I can't find my pants, but I'm wrapped from waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, 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 wait, I'll be right down. I found some sensible capris, oh my god. What? Okay, um, we have to put on, we have to put on pants. Oh, I got a package, wonder what it is. Oh, I bet it's the package of socks I ordered. I open up the box and start pulling the packing peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's butterflies? Oh boy, I almost don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Hey Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up, are you sacrificing them? What? You ordered butterflies? Yeah. You can order dead butterflies online? Wait, so these aren't yours? <laughs> uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Um, okay, love you. I take a look at the box again. Oh, this is addressed to Damien's house. Okay, um, we're not doing Damien's route right now. So we are going to give the box to Amanda. Woof, Damien seems like a nice guy, but this is kind of weird. Without turning my head, I shout out to Amanda. Yeah, dad? There's no name on this box. Why don't you cancel your order and just do as you wish with All these? Right. Whoa, really? When I said I was ordering my own, I was just doing a bit. Sure, knock yourself out. Just don't let them stink up the place when they start to go mm. south. Wait. Will they really start to stink? Is that a thing? I guess we'll both know soon. Yeah, this game is really wild. This game is really Welcome. wild, Lunar. Okay. You got dads. All right, let's um, let's let's talk to Joseph again. Okay, ooh, we've got a heart. Okay, so I guess these fill up as we do the dates because we got an S rank date, so we, can, we need another date. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. Looks like there's a sale on box brownie mix. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder what Joseph's up to. I should see if he wants to hang out or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. Hey, Joseph, wanna hang? It takes a moment for Joseph to respond. Karen, I hope you finally recovered from your brownie induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang, but tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come and be a chaperone with me because I need the help. Aw, I think for a moment I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I just wanted some me and Joseph time, maybe to get to know him a little better. Oh, what the heck, my friend needs help. I'll type back. Buddy, if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon, I should get ready. Okay, so date number two, we're gonna go help him out. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. Hey Amanda, about to head out. Where are you off to? Are you going to go extreme couponing? Mm. I'm actually going to go chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lunar. I'll let Queen know that she's got some packs in, um, so she, she can use that to uh, Im improve her fiefdom. Hmm, you know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude. But I'll have you know that I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. Mm. Okay, thank you for the hydrate. <sighs> Actually was getting a little dry. Can I trade them for a daughter lava lamp? Sorry, you only have enough for a daughter spider ring or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. They try their hardest. It's inspirational. Mm. We arrive at the church to find that nobody's there. There are decorations and balloons and banners and everything, but no uh -huh. youths. Hmm. I've been to a couple of dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert, but generally dances require yeah. people, and those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. Ooh, uh... You're here. I need your help. Joseph gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church doors. It reads, Jesus is coming. Yeah. That banner. What? Yikes. Huh? Well, that's certainly uh -huh. a thing. God made all things, Amanda, <laughs> except for that banner. Ernest made that. <laughs> it's Ernest again. I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell uh -huh. well. You know what God also does? Forgives. <laughs> he forgives teenagers and he never ever breaks their box mods. Hmm? Are you going to break Ernest's box mod? <laughs> no, Amanda. That would be a sin. Oh. I think it's the one right after Sloth. Aye. Karen, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that. Amanda, can you help? Hmm. Physical labor? Huh. Hmm. 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 Amanda begins rapidly scanning the mostly empty room looking for an escape route of her own. I have to go set up the food. Uh. The food's already set up. Huh? 
I'm going to do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's all up to code. Hmm. I'm gonna eat your food. <laughs> Amanda's able to bolt away before myself or Joseph can get another word in. Whew, she can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. <laughs> I dated some giant arms once. It turned out they were all right. You must have been devastated. <laughs> it was Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I get it. Hey. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here, Karen. Are you enjoying my company, or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and height hey. advantage? A little of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. Yeah. Something handsome and pious? You're not that pious. Hey. Debatable. You just alluded to breaking a child's vape pen. Yeah. I would have lost the debate. Hmm. You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. <laughs> magic isn't real, Karen. God said that. God was also a bush one time. <laughs> True. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over uh. to Ernest's banner. The turd Ernest had one final trick up his sleeve. Looks like the nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Uh, all right, I forgot about those. But I realize my oversized dad fingers are far too large to get leverage on the tiny staples. You got a hammer I can use to pry these <laughs> off? Karen, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers. And nails. Oh my god. I'm kidding, we just don't have a hammer. <laughs> but we have to hurry, the youth will be here any moment, and you'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. Wait, I have an idea. I run to grab the marker that Ernest used to draw the draw this thing and jump back on the ladder. We can't get it down, but we can send a different message. We've got a shot here, let's do this right. Okay. Jesus, what? Jesus is coming, Jesus isn't coming, or Jesus is calming. We're gonna go with Jesus is calming. I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well, oh my God. I think that was daddy points. Um, well, that's true, I guess. Bask in his calming presence, Joseph. Relax, crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Mm, the DJ should be here by now. Just then, the doors swing open and a man struts in with his DJing equipment. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly when to play the Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. <laughs> Let's Cupid Shuffle. Um, maybe they meant Jesus is coming like the spice. Oh, Jesus is cumin. Jesus is cumin. Sorry, I'm a degenerate. I was never going to read that. Thank you for clarifying, Kitty. That's probably what they meant for the joke. Hey, hey, I'm not Evan. Evan sold all of his DJ equipment to, to backpack through Europe, so I'm filling in for him. That's the good I do envy him, though. What I would give to drop everything and start over. Ha ha. <laughs> Are you all right? Sad, all right. Quinn. I'm better than all right. I'm DJ Spinmaster Quinn. <laughs> Doubtful they didn't mean the spicy version, I mean. He sighs heavily. I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos that give myself a sense of purpose in life. Is he? Okay. Uh, well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youths will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them to the dark side, right? The DJ thinks for a moment. Believe me, buddy. I got what you need. Okay, great. I'll let you get set up. The DJ leaves. Let's keep an eye on this one. He sounds like he was just going to play Creep by Radiohead on repeat. <laughs> After some time, kids from the community start filling into the dance hall. Some of them seem to notice our sign hack, but they don't seem to care. Most of the kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles and casting sideways glances at the other group of teens. Man, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. Hey, hey, party people. Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. DJ Spinmaster Spin Quinn coming at you with the sound that people want. We're off to a good start. That's the good this sound. next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say, yeah. A few half-hearted yeahs echo through the crowd. All right. He sighs again. I, um, man, it's been a heavy couple days. This next one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can work things out, my little honeysuckle vine. Now, the DJ begins playing Creep by Radiohead. <laughs> Uh, Amanda slides up to me, pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays Creep again. Is this DJ crying? If you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Tom Yorkie swears. There we go. Maybe we should do something about this. 
Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears, sad swears. We have to do something. You guys should try to give him a pep talk. Maybe work him up to Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. Or at the very least, No Rain by Blind Melon. Those are not bad. That's not better. Those are not better. Okay. You want to help? come help us cheer him up? Uh, actually, I just saw my friend, uh, Fred. Frederick. Frederico. Frederico? He's from Latin. I didn't know you were talking to a, taking a Latin class. Mm. I'm not. Mm. So he's from the country Latin? Uh. Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. You can go, Amanda. It's fu- Am And she's gone. <laughs> Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spin Master Quinn is having a quiet cry. Hey, bud. Yeah. Hey, hey, my dudes. How's the party jamming? Uh -huh. It's, uh, not? I'm so sorry, fellas. Just taking a moment to find uh -huh. my groove. Gotta play these sad tunes to properly appreciate the bangers, right? Um, okay, so we should say that's not how DJing works. Now stop me if I'm out of line here since I've never been a DJ and don't have any current plans to become one, but I don't think that's how it works. The kids came out here to have a good time. You gotta cool it down with the sadness. So sad. Oh! Oh, I don't know why that got me daddy points, but nice. Hey buddy, if it's problems you're right. having with, Joseph leans in close to me. What was his wife's name again? It's Sandra. <laughs> Oh, I saved him. If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here and I'm very good. Hey! Oh, I don't know. I can tell that you're hurting. Nobody voluntarily listens to this much radio head on repeat unless they're really going through some tough times. Oh. Trust me, I know. Joseph places his hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, crying oh. quietly. There, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. The, thank you. Uh, I'll put on some dance hall anthems. Oh. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor, where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. They have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for a dance, there's not a whole lot of dancing. Uh. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. Yeah. This is a disaster. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. This ice cream? Top notch. Uh -huh. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Karen. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not going to make you stay here for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can still fix this. We can. I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're going to want to be here for this. Or be seen with me after hey. this. Oh, God. You're not even going to. I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now. Not as what I'm about mm -hmm. to become. Amanda nods. Mm -hmm. Nice knowing you, Pops. She runs out the door. Joseph, I'm going to turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths into it as well. Are you in or out? Joseph stares at me. He knows what he has, what has to be done as much as I do. See you on the other side? See you on the other side. Joseph and I walk out onto the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. Time to get our groove on. Let's start them off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. Okay. Um... Start with the lawnmower. All right, let's rip this baby. I start lawnmowing the dance floor. Joseph seems to respond to that and decides to mow another patch of grass on the dance floor. That's the stuff. I look around. Well, it looks like we've got everyone's attention. All right, Karen, let's turn up the heat. Okay, we're gonna do Running Man now. Since time immemorial, this move has never let me down. I start jogging in place, mar matching the movements with my arms pushing out. This seems to awaken something in Joseph, who feels the fire of Running Man deep within him. I look around to the youths. They're getting into it. Keep it up. I think they're coming around. Okay, now we're gonna cabbage patch. Wow. You can never go wrong with the cabbage patch. Joseph follows my lead. We both take our arms and move them around in circles. I assume, as I assume you would do in a cabbage patch. I look around to the youths. I think they like agriculture. I think it's working. If we pull the right moves, the kids will join us in no time. Okay, now we're going to moonwalk. I start sliding with my feet backwards. I can't tell if this looks good or not, but I think the kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks that they understand the general concept. <laughs> Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt as well. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. I look around to the youths. They're cheering. All right, time for the big finish. Okay, now we're gonna death drop. I've seen enough internet videos of this move where I really think I could nail it. On the beat drop, I kick my legs up dramatically and fall to the floor, my back landing on the ground with a shablam. All of the kids immediately start screaming. They know what's up. But at what cost? I will feel this for weeks to come. My chiropractor is gonna be pissed. What was that? 
the future of dance. <laughs> These kids are going to remember this night for the rest of their lives. Impressionable preteens hit the dance floor with an almost alarming level of enthusiasm. I'm deafened by the combined volume of their cheers. The kids swarm the dance floor. They're all laughing and dancing to the music. Looks like our job here is done. Somewhat obligingly, the kids take the dance floor and start to move around. Before long, they're starting to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey, but we've done our jobs. Yeah. Come on, the rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? Oh. I have something to show you. Joseph leads me out of the main room and down various darkened corridors of the church. I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my feet. Joseph? I think I lost you. His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. I'm glad he can't see me blush. We keep walking. Where are we? This church is huge. We're almost there. I actually have to admit that I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't just invite you out here to help me chaperone. What happened to lying being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? I think there's an exception for when you're trying to surprise a friend. Joseph closes the door behind us. I guess we're in a random room in the depths of the church now. What could he possibly have planned? So last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could live out, our ease, live out an easy tropical lifestyle, where our only worry is trying to find that lost shaker of salt. Since we can't actually do that, I figured I could bring a little bit of the tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Margaritaville, but something like it. Joseph throws on the lights. Oh. Welcome to Margarita Zone. Oh my god! I look around as my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but there are twinkling lights strung across the walls, little garlands of fake flowers, and two beach chairs set up in front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses on the table. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Joseph, this is amazing. There's no pop tops to step on here, buddy. You did this for me? Joseph takes a seat and gestures for me to do the same. I did this for us. I think we've both earned it. I settle in while Joseph pours us both margaritas. You really went all out. I have a flair for the dramatic. And you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good margarita. I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. <laughs> do you think the dance is going to go okay without our sick dance moves? No, not here. You're missing the point of the margarita zone. Margarita zone is a place of rest and relaxation. It is a place where you can kick up your feet and forget about your worries for a while. Oh my god. Okay. Um, we're supposed to do watch out for blown up flip-flops. Okay. That's a, it's a real fear. Thankfully, no heels will get cut in my version of margarita zone. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. You know, it's funny. This reminds me so much of when I was younger. I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? It's uninteresting. I left home young, got in a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, met all kinds of people, did some stuff I'm not too proud of, but I was young and in love and I didn't have to answer to anybody. And now I host fundraiser car washes and take the kids to soccer practice and on the weekends. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. It seems like you spend a lot of time taking care of others, but not enough time taking care of yourself. If you need to talk about it, I'm here for you. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. It's just, I think about Margaritaville a lot, or I guess the concept of it. A place where I could strum all my six string while I wait for the shrimp to boil, drink margaritas all the time, forget my worries. It's an easy life. I had Margaritaville once, but I think the closest I'm ever going to get back to the mar it is the margarita zone. A sort of occasional reprieve from daily life. Is that such a bad thing? This is pretty nice. <laughs> It doesn't last forever, that's the rub. When you're in the margarita zone, it's not like your problems have ever really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe margarita zone is actually better than Margaritaville, because Margaritaville itself is an impossible ideal. Remember what Spin Master Quinn said? Sometimes you just have to play the sad tunes to appreciate the bangers. If stepping on a pop top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly appreciate the boiling shrimp? Oh. Hmm. And Margarita Zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it's about finding a little piece of Margarita Zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. That's awfully optimistic of you. It doesn't have to be anything big. For me, I think it's being able to quietly do word jumbles and drink some strong coffee in the morning to see my daughter smile or I smile at Joseph to spend some quality time with a good friend. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to Joseph. Is it just me, or is he leaning closer, too? 
Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops out of his chair. It's getting late. We should head back. Sure. Joseph and I make sure the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. I hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls into his own driveway. <laughs> Thanks again for the help. Thanks again for Margarita Zone. Mm. Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, it'll be my own damn fault. <laughs> Joseph chuckles and drives away. <sighs> oh my god, I wanted them to I wanted them to kiss. <sighs> I feel cheated. I walk into my living room to find Amanda curled up on under a blanket and groaning on the couch. Hey Panda, you feeling okay? Uh. Dad. I have a tummy ache. Eat too much of youth group food? Uh. I drank too deeply from the well of life and now I pay the price. And by well of life, I mean that big lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer, juice, and sherbet. Amanda slides into the floor with an elongated groan. Need, any need anything, kiddo? A time machine that goes back approximately two hours into the past so that I can warn myself of the folly of excess. I'll pour you a glass of water. Love you, pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Got the kids on the dance floor at the expense of my dignity. A fair trade. Also, everything hurts. I'll see you in the morning, kiddo. Night, Dad. Okay, date complete. Look at that. Oh my god, there's a Radiohead banner. <laughs> wow! Okay, so I've got oh, I've got over 100,000 100, dad points in that one, but I got over 600,000 daddy points. Nice. Okay, so Margarita's own achievement just went to two, so I guess there's a third date that we're supposed to do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking the this little guide guy. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking just like stream go a little long and we finish this. Yeah. Okay, let's try to finish this. I feel like we're very close to done. It's been a long day, and yet I'm not quite ready to sleep. Usually when I feel this way, I mainline investiga investigative TV until I pass out. But tonight, I feel like it would just make me antsy. I decide to, uh, for a relaxing stroll. After a bit of wandering, I find myself passing by Jim and Kim's. Being of legal drinking age and sound judgment, I decide to jump in. Typically, I try to limit my consumption of alcohol to set a positive example for Amanda, but I also feel responsibility to play a role as a social agent in our community, and a watering hole such as Jim and Kim's is the perfect place to do it. Also, I desperately need a beer. Jim and Kim's is lively tonight. The patrons are milling about, and even Neil seems to be having a good time. Coming in here was a good idea. As I reach to collect my beer, I see Mary at the end of the bar. She's not semi-ironically throwing herself all over anyone. In fact, she's alone. She looks so sad. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, apparently, it doesn't matter what we do here, but we're going to say hi. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway, and she finally notices me. You? Okay. This was maybe not the best idea. Uh, ah. Hey, having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's great. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you, too. Mary, I'm not. Mm. I'd never accuse you of anything uncouth, Karen. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. That Mary, that's not true. Ugh. I'm lying to you. It's, this is not, this is not platonic. You're a good friend, aren't you? Um, I'm there when he needs me. Unlike some other people in his life. <sighs> so you're an expert on my marriage now. Well, you brought me into this, okay? It doesn't take an expert to see you two are miserable. I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't take an expert. You're a bitch. Then what does that make you? We were miserable a long time before you started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking that you're some pa paragon of empathy just because you got involved where you weren't welcome. You involved me. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This was a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Ah. Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. I don't like her. She's not. We're not about Mary. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. I pass her room. I can't hear. I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? 
I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> okay, we're gonna finally find out what's been bothering her this whole time. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Something happened? No, nothing happened. Go away. Something must have happened. <laughs> Amanda, get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Oh my god, but what's going on? What is her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon, and maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's mm. bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <gasps> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burn waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her, force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah? I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So I just... Whatever it is, if you don't... And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but... Whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Ah. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Aww. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I'll gra I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is it? The whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... Don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take mm. notes? I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. Um... Shoot. Is Emma R the best friend? I think Emma R is the best friend. Yes. Yeah, I did it. Okay, you got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for Calc AB final. Yikes. <sighs> so another important piece of information is a... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, I, have a, I have a crush on Noah and, uh, well, that was obvious. That's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Hmm. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R. She promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about it at the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. 
Amanda sighs. And then one day I invited everyone out to get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like a whole two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind. I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway. I go to the food court and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out and eating nachos without me. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the, uh, shoot. I don't remember. Oh, no. Um, Grace is the gossipy mm. one. I know. Oh, my God. Thank God. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know it's a lot. You still following me? Um, yeah. Okay. So I guess I do what, what did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Hmm. Can you believe that? Um, I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about? This is all beyond me. And I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like she saw my messages and didn't reply. And I know because the there are like read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Yeah, no worries, Lunar, of course. Gotch. Gotcha. So while all this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I said, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat and I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody Ooh. else, but Emma R's been there since mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected. I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for not having feelings. I mean, you lost all your friends a few months before you're about to, to move. I think that's pretty sad. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously... I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Um, how about high school sucks? Honestly, high school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. When you're still living in your hometown, there's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. But once you go to college and once you get out into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people. And it's going to be easier to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. And some of them only last a little while, and that's okay, too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. 
Did we just eat that whole cake? <laughs> yes, we did eat the whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room before she closes her door. She turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Thank you. You're always welcome. Love I you, Amanda. Love you too, Dad. Aww, I love you too, Dad. Welcome. You okay. got dads. It's time to get our third date going. Wait, what's this? Hey, Karen. What are your feelings about poker? Beyond hardly knowing her. Poker, I hardly... Wow. There it is. Well, good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just saw the joke and I had to take a shot. Please, Matt, I'm a dad. I'm contractually obligated. No, no, I get that. Anyways, we've been playing weekly poker games and I figured I should invite one your way. That sounds great. I love losing money. Cool, dude. See you soon. Okay, we're not going to the poker game. Okay, we're not going to the poker game. All right. We're going to talk to Joseph. And I just realized just now, this is the third time we've been at the screen, but look, you can scroll down. What's your favorite movie genre? Feel good movies. What's your ideal date? Lovely night on the town with my wife. What do you never leave home without? A good book. I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can be a better man, husband, and father. Okay, let's go, you guys. Just so you know, the third dates, they get pretty serious. You might not have time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Yes, let's save and continue. I really want to see Joseph again, but after that weird encounter with Mary, I don't know. He's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hey, Karen, we should hang out. No, like actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs, no kids, just you, me, and the open ocean. How are we going to get to an open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Whoa, precedent. If you're interested... I'll meet you down by the marina, and you can check out the goods if you know what I mean. I mean my yacht. Let me know. Joseph owns a yacht? Joseph owns a yacht? I'm as surprised as you are. Oh, no. You've been holding out on me. Your only daughter whom you love. What, did you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a mm. yacht? What else did it get me? <laughs> um... I'm literally paying for your college, a healthy upbringing, this yeah. one. Yeah, okay. But what if I had that exact same upbringing in a healthy environment, but also I could go on a yacht sometimes? Relax, kiddo. Joseph's inviting me onto his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. Ah. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht? Why not, Amanda? Hmm. Oh my god. Well, I got to go get ready. Of course he does. He wears a sweater around his neck, right? So of course he has a yacht to go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda oh. stops me. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun, but make good choices, okay? But dad, don't stay out too late or you can't go to Jennifer Longfort's birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would propose, propose to me, but ended up going out with Logan Crunchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, dad, good bit. I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. Okay. A quaint marina complete with local mom and pop shops and a small diner framed by the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Hey, Karen. Joseph, where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. You never forget your first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Oh my god, L literally everything about this man's life. Everything. Joseph and his wife is Mary, and his kids are all Chris of some sort. And then St. Peter, okay. Inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Loved yachts. Wow. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot out in the open sea, wrestle with Neptune, set sail in the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling your kids, you know that. Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? Karen, stop thinking about his hands. Pure thoughts. You're going to be on a boat, alone, with Joseph, on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. He's, yeah, he's married. He's married. After undoing the mooring and climbing up on the captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems oh. to be around. Shoving off, boat launching. Man and boat launching as one. 
The Saint Peter navigates out of the marina and into the open water, with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bops along the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. This is the part where we wrestle Neptune. So please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. <laughs> okay, can do. I dramatically pull off my shirt. My dad bought illuminated in the reflection of Maple Bay's rippling water. I am strong. Not bad. We might have to tag team Neptune together. I'm suddenly worried that I haven't applied a strong enough SPF sunscreen and might get a sunburn. I put my shirt back on. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? <laughs> A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get out on the open oh. water. Plus, we could see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Right. Noted. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some buoys. He mm. sighs. Wish I could get out here more often, but, you know, family, wife, saving souls. Yeah. So many souls. I can barely hold them all. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how toned his muscles are. Impure thoughts. Oh. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off his yacht. Hey, dolphins. Joseph, there are dolphins. Oh. So you're scared of whales, but not dolphins? I feel like there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I would be more than comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. Dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open ocean? Yeah, dolphins are actually insane. I like to think that I'm pretty cool. All right, Joseph. It's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. <laughs> I yell out to the ocean. Um, okay. I had lobster last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. Okay. This is what we're supposed to answer. <laughs> you tell him, Karen. Oh my God, he loved it. Oh. And here we are. Oh. Karen, welcome to the ocean. I look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia despite being in a wide open space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man, a handsome married man, and there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. It's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? You know, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is the apex predator. What about sharks? Sharks are tight. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. I, I don't think that's true. And the whales? Hey. Want to look at wistfully out over the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know why? Yeah. Quiet contemplation. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. I, I look out to the sea for a bit and then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It feels like he really is at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar, I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this, but I just feel so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, oh. well, if you really want to oh. know, suddenly I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay, oh. so we might have a small problem. What small problem? Yeah. We are out of gas. The whales are going to get us. The whales siphoned our gas. It's okay. I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. I check my phone. I don't have service either. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? I'm a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me towards the radio and showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. <laughs> I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. MacGyver, oh, MacGyver radio. the radio. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wasn't trying to press power. I can't really, like, make these... What? Oh, let's put the condom in there. Oh, that's dumb. 
Oh, once it's in there, I can't pick it back up. Oh, yes, I can. Come here, condom. Go right there. You're missing something? Do I have to just put all the stuff in there? Wait. Get in there, rubber ducky. Okay, it's all in there. I fixed the radio! Hey, it works, kinda. You just chuck all the shit in there and it works. The radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it! Joseph speaks into the receiver. Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me? He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. We might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, this radio came with the boat when my dad bought it in the 60s, so not great. That's reassuring. Now what? Well, there's worse places to be stuck at than on a yacht. Why? Okay, so we should do wine. Yes, oh my god. I keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. Want to go grab some while I fiddle with this radio some more? Let's see. Wine, wine. It's got to be around here somewhere. Okay, um, when we did this before, like, I just, I went into the kitchen, but I think there's, like, stuff we can look at. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels and everything, leather couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Okay, we're going to examine the bed. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. Less swanky. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels on everything. Oh, wait, I saw that. Um, side table. Hey, wine glasses. I must be hot on the trail, but no wine. I grab two glasses and get back to searching. Okay. There's also some clothes strewn on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep, a pink polo shirt. Well... I guess now I know if Joseph prefers boxers or briefs. This place seems a little lived in. Mm, for an old yacht? Yeah, okay, I read that. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. So, shelf. Uh, let's look at the knickknacks. There's one thing Joseph does right. It's the odd stuff he puts on his shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think an old submarine clock. Uh, there's one... And there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles, on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this? Well? Well, now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Okay. Photos. There's a few photos on the wall here. Look at the... Looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary and Joseph on the yacht. Quality 90s fashion right there. Mary still has her painted st a stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like from a couple of years ago. The gang's all here. Wow, Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's, I know that sweater. And there's one guy on the end that I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, there's Joseph's go-karting with his kids. That's fun. I take a look at everything on, okay. Yeah. Um... So we did lounge cabinet. It's a sturdy cabinet. It's a little dusty, but I bet there's some treasures in here. Um, let's look at this. Look, you can tell a lot with a man about a man by how seriously he takes fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. It's a sturdy cabinet. Okay. Uh, let's look in the drawer. Hey, it's the wine. A whole drawer full of wine. It's Yacht Club Miracle. Twilight Rouge, huh? Come on. Come to daddy. Finally. Time to get back up to Joseph. Okay. What? Well, since we clicked all of them, let's click flashlight. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these. But the chief concern right now is wine intake. Okay. We can go back. I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Karen, wine! Good to see you too. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. Wink. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool. I can land half of my kickflips. <laughs> what is that? Like four? Five on a good day. Poor me. Okay, so we're supposed to say uh, poor power or power poor. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Okay, time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. 
The wine's not bad. There's a hint of, am I tasting grapes? <laughs> you have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. I can't think of anyone else I'd want to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Revive the vibe, Karen. Generally, it takes three days and a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb, but I think we can save it. Uh, okay. Um, this, this view, though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier right in front of me. Sweet, full-bodied. Goddamn. Joseph, I... <laughs> This wine, so good. God damn. Okay. 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 Um, do you like mysteries, hot bodied? Yes. Lawrence of Arabia, Kirk Douglas. It's a really rewarding series, Karen. Uh huh. <laughs> Look, you have fun with your word jumbles. I will enjoy a well crafted narrative excellence of highly regarded serial. Of sex books, <laughs> detective novels, detect sexy detective books featuring a hard-bodied gumshoe who can't be held down by the law or by love or by the mystery of the Spanish lover. <laughs> you read them too. The author really hit her stride around book 17. I go to take another sip of wine but stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage in the margarita zone? That it is, Karen. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the margarita zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? Mm. No responsibilities, no worries, other than possibly dying out here and the whales. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the margarita Link. zone. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram and summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save <laughs> us. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're here to get off this boat, it will be by the grace of God. Oh. Or Steely Dan. <laughs> Amen. Hey. Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help it, but I feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. But his face is really close to my face. Yeah. Karen, I have to tell you something. Mm. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about the clothes strewn around the lounge, the undone bed. Are you living on this boat? <laughs> I, I didn't want to mention it, but he sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything oh. I can do, I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. Yeah. It was a long time coming. Oh. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And now I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny the things that make yeah. me happy. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest and you deserve that joseph you really do anyway i've been having this crazy feeling there's someone who i could get in the habit of having around someone very close to here is it whales <laughs> i mean you oh i was trying to be subtle i think i'm picking up what joseph's putting down i lean forward closing the gap between us when joseph grabs the receiver come in come in is anyone there uh no? Over? We're stranded out on the open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? <gasps> I mean, what are your coordinates over? Karen, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh, I was definitely been leaning on the talk. Oh my god. The Coast Guard. Betrayed by my own butt yet again. I didn't lean on it. You leaned on it. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything. Oh. Over. Hey. Are you listening to us? Sir, we are at the Coast Guard of Professionals. We are not doing this. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness, and we think it's closer than you think. Um, oh. over. Oh, how soon could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. Well, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Wait! Silence. Nobody returns our radio calls. I think they left. We stare at each other for a second. Oh. Well? Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button isn't pressed in. Well, okay. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, his skin still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Come on! His hands drift to my thighs and effortlessly picks me up. Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a little yelp. Lots of time to kill, Karen. We'd better get started. 
Is that where we fade out? That's where we fade out. Okay. Oh man, I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I open my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is must and his lips still a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone, finding little perfect moments of joy, like the way the light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's still holding me tight, even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up closer to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon, and I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I nudge Joseph. It takes a couple of shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. Fine, fine. <laughs> the Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They thankfully keep their comments to themselves. Joseph and, step, Joseph and I step off the yacht and he walks me oh. to my car. I had a great time. Me too. No, thanks to the whales. Yeah. Shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. Take care, Joseph. <laughs> you too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's all right. Amanda, I'm... Dad! Mm -hmm. She runs up and hugs me. Huh? I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck. But it was okay because I was on a yacht. Mm -hmm. Weren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where'd you learn that from? I learned it from you, Dad. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business, fun fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, eh? Panda. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? Yeah, I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge? More than anything pops. <gasps> okay, let's see our rank for our last date. Whoa, big kickflip points. No, not a lot of whale points. Good. Rank A. Okay, so that's still pretty good. It wasn't S. I don't know why I didn't get S. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. We still did good. Okay, we went on all the Joseph dates, so I got that Steam achievement. Whew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act casual. Be cool, Karen, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Mm. Something fishy? Rats. Uh... You ask too many questions. Do you think... Who do you think you are, my daughter? For literally my entire life, yes. I'm kidding, you're right. I have a little surprise for Ugh. you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies under, covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off a table. Amanda's jaw yes. drops. No way! I figured you probably wouldn't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Yeah. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something. Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <laughs> what? Oh my god, it's all the dads. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and yeah. support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the yeah. middle. I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Yay, Amanda smiles and runs off with her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Oh no, Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi. But I don't wanna... Come on, Karen, you can do this. I walk up to Mary. Ugh. Hey. Hey. You been good? Just peachy. 
I have to go over there now. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. Karen! Brian! You made it! <laughs> ha! I don't pass on good Mac. What do you think of the party? <laughs> it's not bad. Just not bad? Right. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi! Amanda's dad. Yeah. Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is, this is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro, this is a real rager. Taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get nice. too wild. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Brian and Hazel peek out from behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all the ice cream cake. Hmm. Wait, girls. How much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll let you guys figure this out. Never m I love Brian. Un no, he wasn't mean to me. He's just very competitive. He's like a, he's a, um, he's big, big into the competition. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Hey. Totally. We, we got into a bragging competition earlier, um, and he won it. So, you know, I'm, I was not too happy about that. Totally. Tell Amanda congratulations for us. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and hey. cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Karen. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey, congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power oh. over me. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? No. Ah. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so <laughs> she'll fit into college just fine. Hey, so here's the one that you were you were pointing out, Kitty Robert. He's like he's the disheveled, messed up one. Hey, Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. I don't know. See you later. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Hey, man, Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of banana bread Kennedys ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. <laughs> what a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. The sun's setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so great oh. to see you again. Great party. I should have you organized our next youth group's mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey, if you aren't busy this weekend, I was thinking we could maybe catch a movie yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like it would be fun. This feels weird. It doesn't feel like it did on the yacht. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Yeah, yeah I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. Uh, we talked, and we talked for a long time. And there was some yelling and some crying, but ultimately, there was reconciliation. I'm sorry, Karen, I have to make this work with Mary. Hmm. Oh, I know. I shouldn't have. I didn't mean to hurt you. And I'm really sorry you got caught up in all of this. I just felt so alone lately, and I'm not even sure I'm doing the right thing here. No, I want to be a homewrecker! I want to be a homewrecker! You've come to mean so much to me, and I'll never forget all of those beautiful moments we shared together. But I have to thank you in a way. This whole thing with you helped me realize that I still love my wife very much. Oh, that's great. I know this probably isn't what you wanted to hear, and I'm sorry if you were hoping for something different, but this is where my life is and I need to do right by my family. But hey, Joseph squeezes yeah. my hand. We'll always have Margarita's own. Joseph stands hey. up. Take care, Karen. You too, Joseph. Joseph walks off. I, man, did I do something wrong? Was there another way this could have ended if I had done things differently? I walked over to the half-melted remnants of the ice cream cake and shoved a forkful into my mouth. This ice cream cake is my new boyfriend. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. 
but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been here for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only hmm. friend. I was really scared of going to college and being far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Karen, if you cry again, you're the best dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Mm? Kind of shocking. All of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we need at least one of us together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock them dead, kid. Hey. Always do. Huh. Amanda and I share a hug. This is the only. This is only the beginning, pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. Oh, I got the good Amanda. Apparently, there's a bad Amanda ending. I got the good Amanda ending. I just got the steam achievement. Intentionally and unintentionally, you're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Hell, you know I've started some some fires in my day. Amanda and I wave bye to the partygoers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. I know that it's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's going to be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story, and I would be nervous about it, but I know that you're always going to be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Team Terry? Team Terry. Oh my god! Okay, we'll have to get the bad Amanda ending at some point. Okay, all right. Credits, we did it, y'all. Okay. <sighs> okay. That was a very sad ending. I really wanted to be a homewrecker and, and like help Joseph in that way. But instead, that's not what happened. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I can go faster. I don't know. I'm kind of like, why did I choose Joseph now? I really wanted to be a home wrecker, you guys. Like, I, I don't... I mean, I guess it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, from the Game Grumps. Okay. You're the best pops, Amanda. Look, and here's our picture together. Aww. What's this? Oh, <laughs> greetings from the Margarita Zone. Wish you were here. I wish you were here, Joseph, but you went back to your bitch wife, Mary. Well, that's Dream Daddy. Okay, we are definitely gonna play this again tomorrow. We'll have to figure out whose route do we want to do. Do we want to do um, Damien's route or do we want to do, um, what was the other one? The gruff guy. I wanna do the vampire or the gruff guy. Um, what was his name? I can't remember. Damien's or, 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 or the other guy, the gruff one. I don't know which one. Um, gallery, I guess this is where, yeah, we'll get as we unlock all the pictures like, like you do in these games. Okay, you guys. Wow. That was pretty amazing. That was a pretty special game. I really enjoyed playing that with you all. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me for this. Um, if you are, if you're watching on YouTube, um, there'll be another episode posted tomorrow with a different route that we'll go through. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.